Oh my goodness, inheritance. We've all inherited <clears throat> all kinds of things. Uh, and for many people, <clears throat> the most precious inheritance is the oldest one. Uh, something, a ring, a piece of jewelry, something on the wall, perhaps a, a piece of furniture that you can date back several generations, maybe many generations. And when we talk about our oldest inheritance, for the people of faith, it is our faith. This extraordinary story that has been passed on from generation to generation to generation. Knowledge of Jesus Christ and a relationship with him is not something very many people simply come to on their own. They just discover this thing. No, it's something that somebody has given to them, has shared with them, has told them about, has invited them to participate in. And so as followers of Jesus Christ, you and I have an inheritance, a spiritual inheritance that goes back 2,000 years. A story that has been passed on from person to person, from generation to generation. And that story was actually a story that was begun in a totally different tradition, the tradition of Israel, a, a tradition that also was passed on from generation to generation to generation for thousands of years before Jesus, the hope of the coming Messiah, a story that now leads to Jesus and from Jesus leads to us. In other words, our faith is for most of us our oldest and for many of us our most precious inheritance. <clears throat> it has been said that this inheritance, <clears throat> this beautiful gift that has been passed on is always one generation away from extinction. Christianity is always one generation from extinction. All it would take is one generation of people to stop passing this on to stop telling somebody else, their child, a neighbor, a friend, about Jesus, to stop inviting somebody to come to a gathering like this where they can hear the gospel proclaimed. And Christianity would cease to exist. People would not come to this, just stumble upon it. It's something that is embodied and lived and shared. And so it has been from the very beginning. And like I say, even before Jesus, faith was always something that was to be passed on. I want to read uh, from Psalm 78, written thousands of years uh, before Jesus. But it gives you that insight of what we're talking about here. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. <clears throat> Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children who will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, the covenant that we talked about last week, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The faith of Israel was a faith that was intended to be passed on. In fact, it had to be passed on. This was before there was written law, written books. The only way that anybody would know about who God was, what God has done, was for somebody who had heard the story to tell it to somebody else, to pass it on to that next generation. And so it was at the time of Jesus. As Jesus burst upon the scene, as he taught 
and told and lived and loved and died and was crucified and was buried, there were people who were eyewitnesses to this remarkable man and his extraordinary life, and it impressed them so deeply that they told somebody else about him. And those people told somebody else about him. And the faith was begun to be passed on. I love what the Apostle Paul writes to the very earliest gathering of people like you and I are gathered here today in the city of Corinth. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with Scripture, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with Scripture, and He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. The faith, the reality, the living Jesus, His story, somebody told Paul, (laughs) and Paul told them, and now they bear the responsibility of telling somebody else. Or, in Paul's letter to his young protege, Timothy, I'm grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother. Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now lives in you. What's Paul telling us here? He went to a small town, probably Lystra or Derby, and in that town he talked to the group of people who gathered about this man, Jesus. And in that crowd there was some woman named Lois who in hearing the story of this extraordinary man and what he did and how he lived, fell in love with him. So much so that she went home and told her daughter, Eunice. Lois was probably in her 40s, maybe 50. Eunice probably in her 30s. And Eunice had a son named Timothy who was a teenager. And Eunice said, Timothy, I've got to tell you about this Jesus. I've got to tell you about what happened to him. I've got to tell you this story. And Timothy heard the story, and he fell in love with Jesus. Years later, Paul returns to that little town, and here's this teenage boy who can't wait to find out more about this man. He is so on fire for faith. Paul says, I want you to come with me. I want you to study under me. I want you to be my right-hand man. And this Timothy travels with Paul and helps to change the world by telling other people. Someone heard about Jesus from somebody else. And that person told someone else. And that person told somebody else. And on and on and on and on. And somebody told somebody who told You. You and I have inherited a faith, a story that has been passed on for 2,000 years. Maybe it was Lois. Maybe it was Eunice. Maybe it was Timothy. Maybe it was Paul. But friends, ultimately, We all trace our faith back to Jesus. A direct connection from the Master Himself told through the voice of those who loved Him and followed Him to this very day. I love 
this one insight. Teaching and training the next generation, or more simply, passing on the knowledge of who God is and what he has done, has always been part of the DNA of God's people. It's always been part of our DNA. This passing on of the faith is called technically evangelism. Evangelism is one of the scariest words in our Christian vocabulary, unfortunately. It's a word that for many people turns them away from Christianity. When you hear the word evangelism or an evangelist, you think of somebody screaming, yelling, pointing fingers. Nothing could be further from the truth. All an evangelist is, is somebody who heard about Jesus and tells somebody else. It's a messenger, an angel, of the good news. A messenger of the good news. That's what an evangelist is, and that's what you and I are called to be. It's part of our DNA. Talking about our faith, sharing our faith, with our biological children and our spiritual children is simply something you and I must do. It's embedded in us. It's how Christianity is shared and lived. In the book of Hebrews, there's an extraordinary passage talking about people who have died and have preceded us into the kingdom. And the writer says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and run with perseverance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, the one who started this whole thing. And for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarded its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The Greek word for witness is martyr. Martos is a witness. It's where we get our English word martyr. A martyr is somebody who loves Jesus so much that they were willing to die rather than to renounce their faith. They witnessed to the very point of death in order that they could pass on this faith. The writer of Hebrews says, those who have gone before us in the faith, who have given their very life for this faith, now surround us as this incredible audience of people cheering us on, encouraging us. It's not just the people that have witnessed to us in this lifetime, but those witnesses who have gone ahead of us, who have already passed on into this next life, who are the ones who have passed on their faith to us today. And so, we have this calling, this identity, this responsibility. And the question is, how are you doing? Because it's not just about passing on our faith to our biological descendants, it's passing it on to anyone and everyone who lives outside of a relationship with Jesus, who doesn't know him, or if they know him, they don't know him very well. And there's essentially two ways you and I participate as evangelists in the world today. One is through imitation, and the other one is through invitation. Imitation. You and I are called to live like Jesus so people will see him in us and through us, how we act, how we behave, how we talk, how we work in our relationships, how we conduct ourselves in business dealings day in and day out how we discipline our children, how we live into those covenant uh, promises that we make. The Apostle Paul says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. 
This man who never met Jesus, but heard about him, heard about his way of life, tried to live as closely as he could like Jesus, and said, now you do what I did, and that got passed on. The imitation of Jesus, his way of life in the world, you and I are called to live into that and live up to that. It's extraordinarily challenging. It's so difficult. And yet it is our calling because people don't have Christian role models. They don't have Christ-like people modeling his way of life on a day-to-day -day basis. And so you and I have that calling. And when we fall short, which we all do, we need to go back to God and say, help me do better tomorrow. My anger got the best of me. I slipped back into that habit that I know is so destructive. I haven't lived like you, but I want people to get to know you by watching how I live. Be imitators of Christ so other people can meet him through that. And the second way is by invitation. <laughs> Inviting people to follow Jesus. Inviting people to hear his story. Inviting people to come and participate in the life of his family. For many people, the way of evangelism is simply, would you like to come to church with me? It's amazing what that little invitation can do. It's amazing how people's lives have been changed just by somebody saying, would you like to come to my church? You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to quote scripture. You don't have to have some big thing. All you have to do is have the courage to invite somebody to do what you're doing right now and let Jesus do the rest. Imagine if we all invited one person between this All Saints Sunday and next All Saints Sunday to come to church. And they accepted the invitation. They actually showed up. What would happen to our congregation? It would... Double, double, come on. We've got some math teachers in here. If everybody invited one person, our little congregation here in Allentown would double in size in one year. Now imagine 2025, two years from now, if you got so excited because you invited one person who actually came to church and fell in love with Jesus, and that person did the same thing, because why? It's part of our DNA. So you continued on with your extraordinary witness, and now have invited a second person the second year, and the person you invited that first year, they invited somebody. How many people will we now have? Four times, good! You and what if the third year from now, you continued with your extraordinary witness, the person you invited has now done it twice, and those people have invited somebody, what are we up to? <laughs> we call that, friends, in mathematical terms, exponential growth. Exponential growth. It's like compounding interest, sort of. Exponential growth. You say, ah, oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Friends, it is happening. It's happening in places that are extraordinary. In countries like India, the church of Jesus Christ is growing today exponentially. People who are hearing the gospel for the first time because somebody had the courage to tell them are telling their neighbors and the church is exploding. In places like China, in places like Africa where I've gone, there are so many new followers of Jesus Christ, they just completely overwhelm the ability to train pastors. Why? Because somebody had the courage to pass on the faith. And friends, remember, <laughs> every one of us, sooner or later, will have our names here. 
you only have so much time. Before you join that great cloud of witnesses, why not witness now? Lord, thank you for teaching us and all of those incredibly brave men and women, extraordinarily faithful men and women, who had the courage to pass on your teaching, your life, your way, that's been passed down from generation to generation and has arrived here this morning. Thank you for each person here. Thank you for those saints who went before us who shared this good news with us, God. Some of them we know. Some of them are sitting next to us here this morning. Others have joined that great cloud of witnesses, of martyrs, of evangelists. Oh God, I just pray for my brothers and sisters. What we have inherited is so precious, so beautiful, and yet so fragile. Help us, God, to find our courage, to find our voice, to invite somebody who doesn't know Jesus to meet him. We pray this in your name. Amen.